Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. So today we have creative writer and podcaster Youngman Brown on the show, although Tara and I know him as Mike Young, which we will get into. Um, Youngman is the creator of both Words Plus Music and the highly popular podcast Your Creative Push, which is up to almost 300 episodes and is possibly one of the most inspiring creative podcasts I've listened to. Um, But before we go any further, Youngman was also unwittingly the catalyst to our very own Kick in the Creatives website and podcast. So Tara, tell everyone how that happened. Well, the funny thing is we can't exactly remember. All all we do know is that we both listened to Mike's Creative Push podcast and then we joined Mike's Facebook group. And and it's odd because I think I saw that Sandra was going to be interviewed for Mike's podcast and I reached out to her and said, you know, do you fancy coming on Mike? So I looked at her work and then we hit it off quite well on on my podcast when I interviewed you and then I think and we can't quite remember this either I think we both said do you fancy doing a joint episode or I said to you or you said to me who knows it's been such a long time ago now doesn't it yeah but but people seem to really like the episodes that we did together didn't they and we did some kind of crazy things because we challenged each other to a a does alcohol make you creative challenge yeah which was fun and gave us a headache but that that actually was what kicked me off like in drawing again which yeah. is, is kind of weird and I think we both as we were doing these little challenges thought you know we really like doing these challenges and we know how good they can be because we'd both done different little challenges ourselves in the past so it kind of all evolved from there and that's why we started the kick and the creators podcast and the challenge website yeah so if it wasn't for Mike we wouldn't know each other even would we no, these poor people wouldn't have to listen to us if it wasn't for Mike. <laughs> oh, and before we go on, before we actually finally introduce Mike, I will just warn you that I have got a horrible cold. So I might sound like I've got a very sexy voice going on. But in actual fact, I might be muting myself every five minutes to blow my nose. So I'm really not that sexy today. Should we get on with it then, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get on with the show. All right. So isn't it amazing what can happen just from one simple thing, which in this case was basically just listening to one podcast episode. And that is really how our own creative, you know, podcast came about. So Mike, we're really, really happy to have you on. Welcome to the show. Um, And what I want to do first is is basically ask where your creative journey began. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor. It's fun to listen to you guys on your own show. And uh, it is amazing how, you know, one thing can lead to another and that's why that's kind of the whole point of the show my show at least and uh i'm super happy to be on so what was the first question <laughs> <laughs> yeah where did it where did your creative journey begin oh uh, well i guess i've kind of always been sort of like a i'd say like a sleeper cell creative person <laughs> like i've always been able to like incorporate creative things into like specifically talking about my writing since that's sort of how the whole podcast started um you know, like I would get term papers and I would try to find creative ways to uh, put a spin on it. Um, and it honestly wasn't until my like junior or senior year of college. So I went to school for computer science um, and my department sucked and they didn't offer a lot of the courses that I needed. And I just had all these extra electives that I needed to take. So I decided to pick up an English minor. And I don't even know why, why I decided to do that, I guess just because I had already had a couple classes under my belt. But anyway, I took a bunch of creating writing courses and it wasn't until like literally my junior year of college. So it was almost like the school system was like, wait, 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 <laughs> learn this, <laughs> learn that you like to write <laughs> and learn that you kind of have a talent for it. Um, and that is sort of where I had this eureka moment. Like Tara, when you were on my show, you were talking about you know, the eureka moment. And for me with writing, that was it. It was realizing that, oh gosh, I can actually like write for fun. I can actually um, do it without 
an assignment, you know? And so that was like a big aha moment for me. And from that point on was really, uh, I, I went off, off to the races and started my own blog after I graduated. Uh, and that led into, I'm sure a lot of the other things that we'll be talking about today. Yeah, so I'm really interested in how you went from writing to this project that you came up with called Words and Music. So, so where did that come from? Yeah, so <laughs> that was another kind of sleeper cell idea. I, I, I like to when I write um, draw inspiration. Tara, again, you're always you know talking about idea generation, and that's the whole point of this podcast. Um, but my idea generation usually comes from like sitting with my eyes closed, listening to music. And I would, you know, tell a story in my own head and then I would write about it. And then like a day later or a week later, I'd read back to it and I, it wouldn't have that same kind of emotion with it. I don't know if you guys ever have that experience with like, um, with your art where the setting plays, you know, so much of a role in the, the creation process. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, so I, I, I would read back and it wouldn't feel, I wouldn't have that same, those same feels, you know, that I had when I wrote it. Um, and I was like, man, it would be so cool if I could somehow like write and have the, the, the reader be able to be the listener too, and be able to hear the song that inspired me. And I'm, then the idea just was born words plus music and just write, you know, write the story along to the beat of the song, just as I, you know, just as it kind of came to me to be able to put it out to the the viewer. And, uh, you know, it took me like two years to build up the courage to, to finally do it. And then that was kind of the whole, the birth of the whole thing when I finally did it. So, so why the two years? Why did it take so long? Uh, it took two years because of all of the resistances that like, that we talk about on your creative push. Like, first of all, just fear of doing something completely new like something that I had never seen before. I would look all over the internet looking for somebody that had done something similar and I couldn't find it. And I don't know if that was like a good thing <laughs> if I was looking for an excuse to, uh, you know, not have to do it since somebody had, else had done it. And then I could have that excuse of like, oh, I don't want to be an imposter. I don't want to copy off of this person, but I couldn't find it. So then it was like just the fear of doing something completely new, something completely unique and uh, thinking like, who am I to, to take this person's song and to like put my own spin on it or show how it inspired me? And then it was like procrastination and I mean, throw in any of the resistances <laughs> and I definitely could check it off as one of the things that, that held me back and took me so long to do it. Is this something then that was the reason that you went by an alias name? Because people listening might be a bit confused because we kind of know you as Mike, mm -hmm. Mike Young. But you go by the alias name of Youngman Brown, and that's what all of your online presence is pretty much like Youngman Brown, isn't it? So is that the reason behind having that alias name? Because you were slightly nervous about putting yourself, your real self out there? I think so. I, when I started the blog, um, right after I graduated from college, <laughs> I was a little bit emotional and upset about because um, it was 2008. It was right when the kind of economy tanked, and I was just angry at like kind of my place in the world and not being able to find a job. And so I was like a little bit emotional and I was always also like kind of worried that, you know, I would eventually be try hoping to find a job and I don't want potential employers searching for me and finding me writing all this garbage online. <laughs> not garbage, but you know, just being a whiny little guy. Um, so that's why I started the alias. And I think that, um, I continue to use the alias for words plus music. And then for the podcast, I, I, I want to say for consistency, but it was also probably a little bit of fear as well to just kind of have that kind of protective um, alias, you know, that protective uh, identity uh, to protect my my true self from all my fears. So did you share that with um, sort of your friends and family? Did they know that you were doing this blog or did you, was that, you know, you were hiding behind that name No, as I well? did. I did share it. Um, so I guess I wasn't too scared of what other people, I, yeah, I didn't share, share every post, of course, and uh, I was also scared of you know what my mother would think. <laughs> but I think we all have that fear. Um, but she wasn't on Facebook or anything like that. So, <laughs> so why did you create your podcast? Um, so the podcast started because you know that whole creative process, that whole two year gap, that whole struggle, the 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 fears, the everything that I went through. Um, I was like, man, it'd be great to have some sort of sidekick, some sort of inspirational thing that I could go to that I could listen to or read or whatever, um, where people talked specifically about, you know, the things I was going through. Um, 
and I couldn't find it. So I, I just decided to create it. And the, and the difference between your creative push and words plus music is that I had learned from my experience of, of waiting so long to, to make that thing and that, that, that pain of wasting all that time. And I just dove right into your creative push. I learned, uh, it took about a month to learn how to podcast and getting the equipment and getting everything set up. And then I just did an episode a day, five days a week for like a year. <laughs> so that was the difference between those two projects. I don't know how you could possibly fit that in, uh, doing an episode a day, because you don't do that now, do you? No, I do once a week you now. Do. It went from yeah, five yeah. to three to two to one. <laughs> and and are you going to stick at one? I think so for a while, yeah. And, until maybe I could monetize it someday or something comes yeah. along where I have a lot more free time because um, I do mm. love doing it. Um, yeah, just once a week yeah. is fitting, fitting in pretty well for now. I remember, I remember coming across your podcast. I was just walking my dog in the woods and I was looking for some sort of creative podcast to listen to and there weren't many out there, to be honest. And I came across yours and I remember listening to the very first episode and – I know you hated that episode after a, a couple of years because you got so much better. But I remember listening to this episode and thinking, oh, now here's a guy who sounds just as ticked off as I am. I've got to listen to this. And so I, I listen to it religiously every day. And I, I listen to, I, I don't know, I think you're at nearly sort of 300 episodes or something now or, or more, aren't you, actually? Yeah, um, almost, almost. Yeah. Um, but you you actually re-recorded that episode. And I think that was because you just said that you'd kind of felt that as you went along, you got so much better. That was interesting. Are you glad you re-recorded it or? Oh, I'm so glad because aside from my new episodes, that episode gets a lot of new listens as new people find the show. And they yeah. go back and listen to They're like, okay, let's like look at the kind of thesis statement of this podcast or what it's all about. And I went back and listened to it, like you said, and I was like, oh my gosh, who is that guy? <laughs> that guy sounds like yeah. he wants to die. Um, so I've, I felt like it was necessary and I wanted to have Ooh. something that I was kind of proud of, you know. But you've obviously inspired a lot of people, including myself and Tara, um, since starting your podcast. But So can you tell us about some of your favorite success stories from some of your listeners, apart from us, of course? Have you um, ever had anybody write to you and say, oh, you know, because of you, I've done this? And Yep. And that is like my currency. That's it. I print them all out anytime anybody writes to me and says how the, the podcast helped them or... Uh, that kind of tells me about their their own creative journeys and resistances. That is like, boom! That is gold. <laughs> that is gold for me. So I always print them out. And I was just telling you guys that I I printed all them out, and I I was reading through them last night. And it's like a stack, you know. It is. It was so cool to to look through. Um, and like you guys creating this podcast is awesome. <laughs> like I <laughs> love. I just love what you're doing, and I love that the fact that you guys met and were able to, you know. Um, that the podcast helped you guys in, in some way and that you're part of the group and everything like that. So that's one of my favorite, favorite success stories. Um, and then Alatar, he made the Blue Magic podcast and um, our friend on the group, Paulo Cogden, he did create an online shop with his art. And Lisa Maws, she's in the group too. She just published her first graphic novel. She sent it to me. It's amazing. And I'm so proud of her. I'm so happy for her. Um, Emily Roberts, she made a an Instagram poetry account. I don't know. It, there's like all these big things that people do, like these big steps that people take. But I, like my favorite thing is just when people say, hey, you know, the, the podcast has helped me to in, in some small way to just get to my art every day or once a week or whenever I can find time. That is like the, the best thing. Like that's the thing that I think is like the greatest success is just doing it for the enjoyment of doing it and worrying about all that other stuff later and just seeing you know people continue to post stuff on Instagram on Facebook on the Facebook group that is definitely why I, I did it and why I keep doing it and it's proof isn't it it's proof that you know what you're doing is is changing people's lives in a way I mean we had didn't we Tara we had a guy called Yardell Perkins um who took yeah oh, he yeah. took part in a one of our challenges which um is called February Fables and the challenge was to uh write a children's book from start to finish just the first draft but in one month and he he did it didn't he Tara and he was he ended up right in fact it turned it turned out not to be a child <laughs> uh, yeah, he, was sort of, he was posting um snippets of this this thing he was writing and it 
at first it was kind of childlike and then it, I think there, wasn't there pole dancing involved in <laughs> and yeah. I said I'm pretty sure this is a children's <laughs> book they said well is it does it is it cheating if it's um, young adults and we, we just laughed and he's actually gone on to um, publish that book oh nice um, it, and and you kind of think do you know what it it's just such a lovely feeling to think if we hadn't have done that challenge if we hadn't put it out there then that even just that one thing um, it just wouldn't exist. It kind of gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, I love so it. warm, so fuzzy. And I, I think that's one mm. of the most important things is to, you know, a challenge is, is one thing to be able to like, you know, set a goal for yourself and to accomplish something or accomplish many things in like a month or a year, wh- whatever it may be. But also like to challenge yourself to do something completely new and then put your mind in a different place. Like it does wonders for what, whatever you create in the first place, uh, when you come back to that, you're coming with all these new perspectives and all this new experience is so important to do. Have you ever thought about doing a show where you have, um, you know, where those people started off and where they are now? Oh, like uh, catching back up with uh, old guests? A before creating push and after. Yeah, that would be so good. <laughs> I should definitely do that. Oh, man. I think I found my new challenge. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd have quite a lot of episodes out of that, I'd imagine, from what you've just said. Yeah, I would. And, you know, it's funny, like looking back at my old episodes, I'm like, man, that was a good one. Man, that was a good one. And it has been a, enough time now where I do want to reach back out. to. I've had a few guests back on the show, but I want to like kind of make that a priority at least once a month, have one of my old guests back on to, you know, catch up. Yeah. And I think when I came onto your show, I was terrified. Mm-hmm. And I think when when it's the first time, you're always so nervous. So I think when you do a second interview with someone, you probably get maybe more out of them perhaps because they're not, they know what it's about. They know it's going to be okay. And Yeah. You don't have trouble talking. No, now, I can't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've realized, I realized when I took the, the sort of job of the editing, I can't believe how much I talk. And I said to Tara, why don't you just tell me to shut up? <laughs> I, just, I just waffle. I do nothing but waffle. So we, we have a laugh about that, really. <laughs> well, I mean, say, you know, that's the whole point of, the, of doing a podcast is to to be able to waffle, <laughs> to be able to, you know, talk about the things and kind of explore, you know, writing is one thing for me. Like, that's like a way that I'm very able to effectively communicate. But um, talking is like a much I think better form of communication too like um, and to be able to like bounce ideas off of other people like that's the whole reason that I I loved podcasting and got into podcasting and then when it came time to like make content realized that I wanted to make a podcast was because podcasts like changed my life um, the first podcast I listened to was the, the Joe Rogan experience and you want to talk about waffling on his episodes are three hours long with uh, his oh guests he just has them and they just talk and talk and talk and for, like that kind of experience of like putting your earbuds in and being able to like be the third person in a conversation and listen to these you know, listen to people going on and on and going on about ideas and especially ideas that you've never in real life talked to anybody else about, but you are nodding your head in agreement because you definitely like are tapped into everything that they're saying. That's like a magical experience. And that's like a very special experience that I think we're very, very lucky to have. Like that's free content that's free to make and free to distribute and free to get. And you can find anything these days, except for like back when I was looking, I couldn't find it. (laughs) Um, But, you know, you can any topic that you want, whether it's like cryptocurrency or uh, creativity or sports or knitting or anything, um, you can find that content and find like that extra inspiration. So it's that's what it's all about is is just going on and on. So keep waffling. (laughs) So you've obviously put like a huge amount of time into your podcast and it inspired a lot of people. But do you ever find it gets in the way of, you know, the other creative projects you want to do, like your writing, uh, say, for example? 100%. And I, I, I was just kind of exploring this in a solo episode, actually, um, how, yeah, it has taken up a lot of time. And I kind of devoted to, like, I knew that that was going to happen when I first started, but it eventually kind of takes a little bit of toll on you, you know, like, you get burnout, (laughs) that happens. And then you realize that, you know, so much of your efforts are going into one thing that you are uh, completely neglecting some other things. Like my blog hasn't been updated in a couple years. And yes, but it does bring me so much joy. Like you have to like come back to that and and remember that it's a, it's a balancing act, but I think it's like the number one thing is to take your head out of it sometimes and to look back and realize 
that, oh my gosh, like in an auditorium full of people listening to this podcast and like I like we were talking about before, the the emails, like it actually is working and helping other people and doing, you know, it's being that thing that I needed when I when I was struggling creatively. So I think that's what you have to do. You have to take yourself out of it and realize, you know, oh my gosh, it's been going for two and a half years, three, 300 episodes or whatever. And yes, maybe I've been struggling to do this other content, but I can get back to that if I want. I can make my own decisions. I'm the one that created this podcast. So, you know, I can slow it down to one episode a week or take a couple of weeks off, whatever you have to do. Did you find when you did slow it down, you sort of had a sense of relief that you could yeah. actually do other things? Yeah, it definitely was like each time I slowed it down, it was like, oh, wow, like I can now spend time with my wife. <laughs> I can now oh, yeah. like work my whole shifts because sometimes I was leaving work early in order to do interviews or edit in order to get it out the next day. And you don't want your creative thing to become a job, even if there are other people kind of relying on you. Like you have to make sure that you're, own, you're still your own boss and it's good to set, you know, deadlines for yourself and try to push yourself but at the same time if you are if that's at the expense of family or you know real life things it's important to kind of take it back a little bit and uh, also sometimes you need a complete break and I, I you know just took a one month complete break I was ahead on the podcast and everything yeah it's, it's important to just listen to your heart and and take breaks if you need it because your soul will feel fulfilled <laughs> when it gets a chance to kind of uh, take a breath you know yeah, I mean, it kind of leads nicely onto what I was going to say next, um, because you've also got a non-creative job as well, haven't you? You're a poker dealer, yep, yeah. um, and you've got your dogs, <laughs> and of course you've got your wife. And you and I have both spoken before, haven't we, about how difficult it is to to fit in any kind of creative um, pursuit when you you actually like your wife or your husband. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, so, so managing time is so so difficult isn't it when you you know you're trying to do something you love but you want to be with people you love and you've got to kind of put time into everything so so how have you managed then to fit you know to a job um your wife your dogs your family your friends um and your podcast and your you know everything else you do how on earth to have you managed that right well i think when you get like new creative goals or like creative a creative thing that you want to do. Um, it's important to kind of weigh how much time that's going to take with like how busy your life is already. And it's important to, um, take some things out of your life that you already know, or that you come to realize like, aren't that important or are holding you back or holding your time back, uh, from being able to like get to that goal. So for me, it was like TV, uh, movies and just, <laughs> like kind of farting around on social media, like I had to cut those things out and that definitely helped. But um, also like having a calendar, um, that's really important for me. Like at the beginning of each month, writing down, okay, an episode needs to be edited by this day. It needs to be published by this day. I need to do X number of interviews. I need to reach out to X number of people. It takes a little while to figure out like exactly how much of that time needs to go uh, into each month. But if you can kind of map it out in the beginning of the 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 month, it kind of chunks it down so it's not as like kind of overwhelming of a problem. And then mm. also when I when you get to the work to try to do as deep work as possible. So instead of you know having your phone next to you or um, having the TV on or being like, okay, well, this is editing, so I can kind of you know be able to half ass it <laughs> like no, like, sit in a room where it's just you and your computer or you and your easel or you and your musical instrument or whatever it is and have that like just be like one-on-one -on -one time with that creative thing and just try to put in as like solid of an effort as you can because your time is like so valuable so just doing as, as deep work as possible um so i know that t tv sorry to interrupt there but you know you're talking about tv and i know that you used to watch a lot of netflix didn't you all the netflix <clears throat> and i've never <laughs> Yeah, and I have heard that a lot, and a lot of people say this, and I kind of I've never really been that much of a TV person. But my husband he recently introduced me to Breaking Bad, and that is fatal. Bye, sorry. Absolutely fatal. <laughs> yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll be stuck on that one. That's a binge-worthy show for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a shame though because sh shows especially are so good. Like, there's so many awesome creative people, and there's so much money going into these people to pay them to like make this wonderful content like shows are great um but the thing about like netflix and 
it, they they release the all the episodes at once, and you can just binge them. You can watch them one after the other. And it also like when you're done the episode, it's like starting next next episode in five seconds. You have like five seconds to say like, no, I won't. And it just like ended on a cliffhanger and you desperately want to know what happens in the story. Um, it, it's, yeah. it's a cool experience when you're going through it. But like that's what like our world has like kind of come to. Like if you're watching YouTube videos on the side, usually when I'm watching a YouTube video, there's like three or four videos that I'm like, wow, that looks interesting. That looks interesting. And I'll open them in a new tab. And then suddenly I have like 20 tabs of like videos that I like now have to watch. And like on Facebook, they're asking you like, do you want to be friends with this person? And, oh, you might be interested in this. And you're getting advertisements thrown at you. And it's just like, it's like a battle for our attention at all times. And like, you have to like, you have to realize that it is a battle and you have to like take that on yourself if you want to be successful with the things that you want to do as opposed to doing things that, you know, Facebook and YouTube and Netflix want you to do. So focus rather than, because I mean, you sound like me who is easily distracted. I had that on every school report I ever had was, <laughs> she's really good, but she's very easily distracted. I, had it on a, on a, I wonder if that's just a trait of a creative person. I think so, because we're, we're so interested in the world around us and we're so interested in many different things that it's, it's hard not to fall down that like shiny object syndrome, you know, and see if you can do the next thing. And I, I think that's also a good thing as well. Like I'm always trying to promote people to like do a new thing. Like we were already talking about that on the show to challenge yourself to, to try a new thing, but it's a fine line and you really have to know yourself in order to be able to determine whether this shiny object is, is something that you could do to enrich yourself or it's something that you're doing to waste your time and to take you away from the things that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's finding out really whether you're doing whatever you're doing for the right reasons, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, challenges, that really brings us on to our next question, which, which is that I know you've taken part in two that I know of, which is Cramuri mm -hmm. and NaNoWriMo. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about them and how you got on, on with those challenges and what they did for you. Yeah, well, as a writer, I felt like I, I had to do NaNoWriMo, which is, uh, you know, writing an uh, – it's national – novel writing month in November. And it's writing, uh, I think, I don't know how many words it is, um, but in one month writing a fiction novel. And a, a few of my guests were talking about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm thinking about writing my Your Creative Push book. Uh, um, maybe I should do it in November. But then I decided that since I had been kind of two years out, not, not completely out from writing, but I felt like I probably would come back to it and need to have some practice in order to get kind of my skills back or kind of my chops back. So I decided to do NaNoWriMo or NaNoWriMo or however you say it, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, just write the, the same amount of words, but just writing whatever the heck I wanted, like writing blog posts and uh, just things for fun. And I, I, so I did that. And then um, the other challenge is Cramuary, which I actually created. And I, it's like in January doing, you know, picking your kind of New Year's resolution, like a big project and doing it in just one month. Because um, we talk on, on the show about Parkinson's law, where if you're allotted a certain amount of time to do something, you're going to take that full amount of, to do that. But you can also like kind of cram that down into half the time or a quarter of the time. And I was trying to do, you know, one twelfth of the time <laughs> and encouraging people to just kind of knock it out of the park and, and just get it over with. So that, that's when I decided that I wanted to do the Your Creative Push book and then I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, and the reason, there was a lot of reasons and I kind of, <laughs> I, I recently had a solo episode where I just kind of talked to the microphone and talked to my listeners, just trying to like work out exactly why I didn't do it. And there's a lot of different reasons, but I got burnt out, <laughs> especially with doing NaNoWriMo in November, like writing so much, focusing on that. And then in December, focusing on getting all of my January work done ahead of time. <laughs> so I was doing double the work. Oh, wow. um, and I just got, I got way too burnt out. And when I sat down to like write the first word of the book, I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> like I knew that it wouldn't, <laughs> like, like I knew it wouldn't be my best effort. And I really wanted to enjoy the process of writing my, my first book. Um, so I, instead of doing that, I just took a month off and it was probably the best decision I made because <laughs> now I, I actually did starting, started writing the book and I love it. And it's like, I feel like it's good work and I feel like I'm flowing and everything's like really focused in. So I'm really happy that I made that decision, but 
it's a hard decision to make sometimes. I really liked what you, um, because you you were talking about NaNoWriMo and that you were going to use it instead. You kind of, you kind of adjusted it to suit you, didn't you? Rather than follow the rules completely, you said, right, "Right, I'm going to do the number of words, but I'm not going to write this book. I'm going to do blogs. I'm going to do my words plus music. I'm going to just write that number of words, but for multiple projects. So I think that's quite a good, you know, because the thing with challenges, sometimes people feel quite tied, don't they? To how oh you know I've got to do this it's got to be this I don't I think if you can manipulate a challenge to suit your own self that's not that's a good way of doing it but your you said about your blog that you wrote a lot on your blog have you got a blog then that I don't know about because yeah Youngman Brown Dog yeah but it I thought that one hadn't been updated for a couple of years it hasn't it hasn't the the things that I wrote haven't been published yet because <laughs> oh I see so you, oh that's yeah, yeah. that's why I okay why not. <laughs> Um, I think because uh, some of them were personal, some of them were just for wow. me, and yeah. also um, the whole idea of starting. I, I wanted to have a, a backlog of stuff too, because I do want to start um, posting on there, and I also want to start an Instagram account. So a lot. So for the NaNoWriMo challenge, it went from blog posts to these like really short sort of poetry slash prose things that you like are worded sort of the way that I write in words plus music um, but kind of in sort of a poetry slash prose type Mm. of thing so I kind of like morphed my style of writing as well and just went with it and I I was like these are kind of so short and so I don't want to say sweet but they could they could easily be posted on like Instagram instead of like a blog and mm. I'm, I'm also just so used to Instagram now um, that the, I, I'm kind of like focusing on going towards that. So I'm, I'm thinking about actually starting an Instagram account and uh, updating that with some writing too. Some of my listeners have inspired me to do that too. I just want to follow up on you saying about writing the Creative Push mm-hmm. book. I'm just wondering, how are you going about organizing that? Are you still doing it in sort of a challenge mode where you're getting yourself to write x amount of words a month or are you just you know letting it flow as no, I, what i decided to do was just let it flow yeah because that's when i do my best work and you know i the way i am i'm kind of like ocd where um an idea comes and then i have to get it down and then another idea comes as a result of that idea so right now i'm just writing and just letting that all flow out of me and then gonna try to organize it later as opposed to kind of um sort of like Sandra was saying, like, you know, uh, putting yourself in too tight of constraints of like having, okay, this chapter has to be about this and this chapter has to be about that. Instead, I just want to just be as honest and as open and, and whatever as possible and just get it down and then figure out all that other stuff later. Not really think about it as writing in a book, but writing all of my different ideas and sort of thesis statements or whatever, and then focusing on the organization part of it. And the, the other realization that I had with the, the, Cranberry challenge was I could do a Cranberry challenge. I just don't want it to be the book because I want that to be kind of an elongated, enjoyable process as possible and not be worried about like the end date and getting it done in one month. So for Cranberry next year, I'm going to have to come up with a, a good idea. Maybe you guys can help me. <laughs> oh, you're, you're still going to go with it. You're going to carry on. Absolutely. And try it yeah. It was just the, the realization I had was it, it like, I want to do it. It's just, I, I picked the wrong project. I think as well, you find that when when you've suffered from burnout just once, it's frightening, isn't it? You, you're scared to have that same feeling again because I've had that before. And I, I honestly thought at the time I was never going to pick up a paintbrush because it was almost like somebody had sort of sucked every creative atom from my body and I just didn't <laughs> even know how to paint anymore. And it was literally just that I tried to do so much and, you know, in so little time. And I think although a challenge is really good – do you think you have to pick the right ones that you know suit your own personality? I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and with with mm. burnout, it is a it is a scary thing, and, and it is like a depressing thing, and it just takes all of all of you, and it, and it's impossible to see the other side when when you're in it. Um, but just know that you know it's not forever, <laughs> and it's okay to take you know breaks. But as soon as you you start to get that um, inkling of your talent and your inspiration back to just take it easy and just start getting back to it and slowly it will come back to you or, or fast you never know but putting yourself in the position that you can create again is so important to do 
Well, hats off. You're going to do Cranberry again next year. That's great. And are you going to do Nano Nano Remo as well? Uh, maybe, but def- definitely Cranberry. I don't know if I'm going to do Nano Remo or not. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so many other challenges out there anyway. I suppose. Right, and if you yeah. don't, if there isn't a challenge that suits you, you can make your own. Just put a hashtag in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to ask: Have you got any tips? You know, if someone is thinking about joining a challenge, you know, what, how would you encourage that they go about it? How would you say, you know, to go about it so they don't want to give up? You know, even if they feel like they should or or should they give up? Right. <clears throat> well, for as far as like starting, um, yeah, like when you – so if you like see somebody doing a challenge or you're hearing, you know, you're listening to Kicking the Creatives and you're just like, oh, I could do this challenge. Like as soon as you get that that inkling, um, I, I call it like a heart flutter. Like you get like maybe like a nervous energy or nervous farts I always talk about too. And you're like, <laughs> oh, like that's your body telling you that like you should you should do this challenge and this challenge is for you. Um, and like you kind of already know that you have to do it. Um, and when, so when you get that like very first surge of inspiration, really to do anything, but especially a challenge, um, that's like the most important moment. And you usually like the, like you'll get a bunch of ideas of like, Oh, I could do this one day and this another day and this another day. Like take that time, sit down and write down every idea possible that you get. And like without any kind of judgment, just get them all down on paper because that will definitely help you later. Um, so, so anyway, my advice is like, if you're, if you're thinking about doing a challenge, like you're already, (laughs) you're thinking too long already, just like get going. Like don't think about it too, for too long because you'll just start coming up with excuses like why you shouldn't do it or you're not going to be able to come up with enough ideas. Um, and then, yeah, if you do get burnt out by it and write down why you want to do it and like where you want to see yourself, like what, what do you want to accomplish from it? Do you want to get better? Do you want to build followers? Do you want to just like build up a body of work? Like, I think it's important to have these kind of, you know, thesis statements so that when you're at day 25 and you're just like, I can't get through it. Just like keep reading those thesis statements. So you have that kind of inspiration, you know? It's a really fine line, isn't there? With, um, you know, am I burned out or can I not be right. bothered today? Yeah. It's, it's so Ooh. tough. And that, that's like yeah. the toughest time to, to get through it. But I think when you can kind of find that, that third gear, you know, or fourth gear, or fifth gear, <laughs> you can find, you know, that kind of inspiration when, when you are, when the tank is empty, that's when you find like, new ways, uh, new things that you never thought about too. I think that's when you can usually be the most creative if you can get past that. And also it's good practice to get past that because then the next time you're burnt out, you have experience, like you've already been there, you know, (laughs) and you can much more easily get through it. I do think it's easier to um, get something done if you are in some kind of challenge sometimes because you're kind of accountable, aren't you? It's almost, I mean, for instance, if if I was to say, right, I'm going to do NaNoWriMo, and then I know, I think you have to kind of put your word count up every day, don't you? Right. And there would be there would be part of me that would be thinking, um, wrongly, but I would be thinking, well, everyone's going to be waiting for me to put my word count up. <laughs> everyone's going to know if I don't do it. But there's something in you that because you announced to the world, this is what I'm going to do. But if you don't, you kind of feel you're a, uh, you know, you're, you're a failure. But whereas if you're just doing a challenge, you've set yourself as in, I'm going to write a book this month you know three or four days down the line you're already thinking oh do you know what I'm gonna chill out today (laughs) I had a heavy night last night I'm not gonna bother today I'll I'll go back to it Monday I think with challenges you kind of you don't do that do you tend to work through those times whereas it's I'm not very self-disciplined as well that's the other thing I think um that's another way that's another reason I think doing something with other people is always quite a good, you know, you've got people cheering you on, haven't you? Yeah, it's like having a workout buddy. <laughs> you know, you don't want to let yeah. you don't want to let people down, you don't want to let yourself down, but it's very easy to let yourself down because nobody's going to know. <laughs> but if you're kind of announcing it out loud, telling people yeah. and even if people aren't paying attention as much as you think they are, there's probably like a 10 X uh, difference <laughs> where, where how much you think people are, are caring and how much people actually care. Um, it's just important to have that kind of imaginary sort of accountability so that you do. But I think it. it's, it's important to acknowledge as well that, you know, people, the best of us will fail at these things sometimes, but the main point is you, you try your best. Um, but you, you not doing Cranberry, I think it was a breath of fresh air to hear somebody say, I didn't do it. Because you only hear about the people that do do things, don't you? Ten, people tend not to come forward and say, do you know what? I, I didn't. And I think it's really important to hear 
from people like that too. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you, Mike. Um, so before you set up the podcast and everything, did you have a lot of creative friends who who were writing and doing other things that you could actually make into none. accountability like, partners? Pretty much none. <laughs> um, and that's not to say that they weren't like my friends aren't creative. It's just that like none of the like again that sleeper cell thing. Like people, they're just doing their other doing other things. And now that I've started it, I found like now that I started the podcast and whenever I talk about it. Um, you, you see that like everybody has creative potential and they all talk about, you know, things that they want to do or used to do, whether it be writing or art or stand up comedy or, you know, everybody has these kind of hidden talents or hidden, uh, like wannabe talents, you know? Um, but yeah, to answer your question, once I left college, like I didn't really have that too much in my life. And another reason why I really wanted to selfishly create the podcast to kind of (laughs) find friends, (laughs) connect with other creators yeah have you ever actually have you ever met anybody that you've interviewed have you ever managed to actually connect with someone face yeah, to face I, actually yeah uh, kelly Klemenko, he was a photographer um uh, out oh. in sedona arizona and a beautiful photography of, of specifically sedona uh, my wife and i actually <laughs> flew out um because we were going to go to vegas um for a little mini vacation and we decided to add on sedona to it and we drove to sedona and we hung out with him. He, my wife's a photographer, so one night we went out into the desert and did. They did some astral photography. He showed her kind of the ropes on that, and they showed us some trails and stuff like that too. So that was a really cool experience. And uh, you know, I'm always willing to or wanting to meet all these kind of awesome creative people. And there's a lot of a lot of yeah. people I've interviewed in in my general area. So I, I have a little list where <laughs> next time I'm near them, I want to like contact them and meet up with them because I think that's really important to do too. So what are your own creative goals now then for the future? Have you got sort of, um, you know, a list of things that you want to do sort of in the next five years yeah. or something? Yeah, well, number one is the the book. <laughs> I want to write the book and I'm really yeah. excited. That's like the thing that's bringing me the most kind of nervous farts right now. <laughs> but <laughs> joy right now. Um, the podcast, obviously, keeping with the podcast, um, more words plus music videos, which I actually did start. Uh, that as well i started like all my projects i started spinning all those plates again to kind of wake me back up (laughs) Um, but also yeah the blog and that instagram account i was talking about that's on my agenda as well um but you'll you'll uh, you'll be the first to know about all of them (laughs) so what about your actual job because like me you have a job that you that's non-creative as well Mm -hmm. and i've heard you say as I felt sometimes, you kind of feel like resentful that you're there, don't you? But at the same time, it kind of allows you to do what you do. Are you any closer to sort of thinking, do you know what, I'm going to leave that job and just create full time? Or are you thinking, do you know what, I'm just going to keep on because I know it gives me a kind of um, lifeline? Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm a, I started applying to other jobs because uh, <laughs> my wife and I want to move as well back to the Philly, Philadelphia area. Um, right. So I started applying to jobs up there about a month. That was, that was one of the other reasons why I didn't want to write the book because I wanted to start thinking about where I want to go, what I want to do. Um, and I want to find a, a job that's a little bit more tailored to doing something creative. So I've applied to a bunch of different writing jobs. And if any, Hey, if anybody listening knows any jobs up in the Philadelphia area, then it, I can do anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think... The I've had the realization for the past couple of years, actually, that the job that I have now is good, but it's so negative. It's such a negative atmosphere because people are losing yeah. money and just, ugh, it's like it's such a drain to go in. And I, I used to love poker too, but it's like you can only you can only be in that the kind of casino industry for like five years before your soul is completely ripped out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I can imagine. I think um, – it's got to be a creative job you go for and you are such you were born to write I mean your blog I know you haven't posted for a couple of years but the last post wasn't it about breastfeeding or <laughs> yeah, something yeah. Oh, and man. it was it just totally cracked me up it was so funny just listening to a man man's point of view and I read it and thought you know you're, you are you were definitely a born writer well I think I think I'm um, you know I'm always wanting to to give this public service announcement to you know if you just had a baby for all you mothers out there if you just have a have a your number one concern should be your brother, and if he is in the room, don't take your nipples out, <laughs> or just tell him, just let him know, just give a little bit of a warning, like, hey, my boob is about to come out, please turn away. 
think it's really important. Okay, that should be your number one concern. I'm not sure if anyone will want to find out about you now, but if, if they oh, do, man. Um, yeah. Where so yourcreativepush.com. That's where you can get all the podcast episodes. Um, Wordsplusmusic.com if you're interested in that. And uh, on Instagram, I'm your creative push. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you for having me on, and thank you for creating this podcast. I love it, and uh, I can't wait to have you guys back on my show. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yes. Thanks so much for coming on. It's been brilliant to catch up again. Thanks, Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Tara, you were worried, weren't you, more than more than I was, because we've never done a three way conversation before, and she was sort of saying, "Three way." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh now, now she gets rude now. <laughs> oh, now we're off air. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, but I don't don't forget. I do the editing. Oh so yeah, I, 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 do. Can do, I can do the. Speech. No, put it in there. <laughs>